Hey there, it's Brittany, and I'm back with a St. Patty's Day themed um, blitz video. We're gonna just make a bunch of stuff. And it's not gonna be earrings. It's not gonna be focused on just earrings or bracelets or necklaces. It'll be whatever I come up with. <laughs> so I'm gonna insert a video here of some of the stuff that I'm going to be using. And I actually pulled a lot more than that. It's just everything that would fit on my board. So um, let's get started. I actually, something that wasn't there that I just unboxed was this green leather. And it's really inspired me. I haven't made a leather bracelet or necklace or anything in a while. And look how crazy this green is. Isn't that yummy? I got this from Tracy's Distash Group. So maybe we'll make something with this leather. Um, what can we, I have to make sure that I have a big enough hole in the items that I use to be able to um, get those on the, uh, get them on the leather. Let's see, here's a boho bead. See, the problem with boho beads is they tend to be hollow. Oh, we got them on. I like this boho bead. So I, I got that one out, this one. Um, these are from Jesse James Bead. Obviously it's like their <laughs> signature bead. Um, I don't know if they have any more right now because I got these a while back. They were just in my boho bead drawer. So we can do, um, uh, these have pretty large holes. I think I want to stay away from those. Um, I have ch a charm, a Celtic knot. I also have, I know I have a shamrock somewhere. Oh, here we go. I don't know. We'll see if we can incorporate this. I'll have to get up and find a ring so i have that um let's see what else do we have uh let's see these don't really match that i'm going to look I'm looking for beads to match my boho beads i have some bone beads wouldn't be very traditional but i think they look very nice with those beads so okay Okay, what else can we do here? I have some chevron beads. Mm, they aren't the right green, although they're close. We'll just leave them there. Um, I have some check fire polish, but I'm not actually sure that the leather will fit through that. I don't think so. We'll put them to the side just in case. All right, so we I feel like we have a base of beads. These probably aren't gonna fit on my leather, so I'm gonna set those aside just in case. Um, but this is looking a little busy, right? Like, that's crazy. I'm not gonna make a whole bracelet out of these crazy patterned beads. Um, I might use one or two of these beads, one or two of these, obviously I only have two, but I need to find some um, just regular green beads that will fit in to the bracelet. So let me look through my green drawer. Okay, I found two different beads that would work. I have these crackle glass beads. They're slightly different than the green that I showed you a minute ago. And then I also have these, well, they're not crystals, they're just faceted glass beads. Some of them have, um, oh, we have some crackle glass in here too. Um, <laughs> they have headpins through them, but that was probably from a project where I didn't use them. So probably something from Christmas. So we'll see. I think we'll we'll check out the um, round ones to see if the um, leather will go through. I don't know if you can hear it, but Goldie is in her bed digging. Like, there's nothing to dig, child. <laughs> so I cut that in an angle to help it go through the hole a little bit to see if it's big enough. Oh, 
and it is. So we're gonna use some of these, maybe some of the um, crackle glass. We're gonna use um, maybe a couple of these bone, a couple of the chevron. We're gonna use these two bohos and one or two of these charms. I need to find a toggle clasp um, to close this off, or I could use a magnetic clasp too. But I'm gonna check out the clasp situation. I'll be right back. Okay, so I found the clasp sets that I just got from um, the March Bargain Bead Box. So I'm gonna use that because it fit. I'm gonna go ahead and um, make a knot. And this is a barrel knot. Okay, we want our shorter piece to be on the bottom. I have my barrel knot tube, you can use a straw. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and pull this around. Oh, I, sometimes I don't use it long enough. I'm gonna use, to be safe rather than sorry, I'm gonna use a longer tail there. And I haven't cut my leather off of my spool yet. So put that guy in there. And then we'll come up over our longest piece of leather we'll wrap three times and I'm gonna put the end of my shorter tail through my barrel knot tube there we go yep oh, let's try that again bring them back around and we'll then we'll go I was uh, undoing one of my loops there. There we go. Put that through. Pull our tube out, but make sure you keep a hold on your loops there. And then we'll tighten this up. Pull it through our tail. Then we'll walk our knot down to our clasp. Pulling. Just take your time. Don't need to go fast. There we go. There we go. So there's our barrel knot for the end of our clasp. And I'll go ahead and put a dot of glue there so it'll be dry by the time I'm finished with my bracelet. I use GS Hypo Cement. And it always does this. Gets gunked up in there, but it, it's pretty easy to ungunk. It's a technical term, by the way, is ungunk. So I'll just kind of get that in there with my precision tip. And we'll let that dry. Yes, I got a, a, just quite a bit on there, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll let that dry. And then you want to make sure you put your cap back on as soon as possible. All right, so while this is drying, I'm going to set that off to the side. And I'm going to try and figure out how I want my pattern to work out. So I know for sure I want both of these boho beads to be in my bracelet. Okay. I know for sure I want to have these guys in the bracelet. Um, I'm gonna make sure I cut out the uh, head pens in a minute. Um, let me check the check glass, <laughs> no pun intended. Let me check the check glass beads to see if they're, I don't think they're long enough, but I know I just got these beads and I cannot tell you where they came from. I honestly don't know. I don't know if it was Sam's shop. I don't know if it was a Distache group. I feel awful that I don't know where they came from. It could have been bargain bead box. I just don't know. I just don't know, I feel horrible. 
oh, it was close. Like it goes in there, but it gets stuck. The hole's just not gonna be big enough for the leather. Okay, well, I feared that, so. Okay, whatever. Um, and then I'm gonna cut off just a couple of these bone beads. Yes, this isn't traditional uh, St. Patty's Day, but that's okay. We can use it throughout the rest of the year too. All right, so I have some bone beads. Not 100% sure on the um, placement yet. I'm just kind of getting them out here. Okay. And then let's grab our chevrons. Oh, these have some red in them. I didn't really notice that. I wasn't really paying attention. Hmm. It's okay, because on the side you, can, you won't be able to tell that. All right, so we have our beads that we potentially want to use. Okay, so since we only have two large, hold on one second, let's see if this matches. This is a big mama. I was thinking about putting this in the middle, but that's really big for this type of bracelet. I think we'll be okay without him. So, all right. So I don't really have like a focal bead, but um, that's okay, we can just do like a, a weird, like not a weird pattern, but a pattern and nonetheless. We'll do that. Okay, all right, so we'll see where that takes us. Um, I'm gonna grab my leather again. And honestly, I'm always the worst at trying to decide how long to make something before I cut it off because I, n I just never know, I just never know. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut this very long. And if you don't have enough leather to do that, that's fine. Maybe you'll do a practice test run or something with a different kind of material. So you can see like maybe some, some cord or something to see if it's long enough for your knots and everything. Um, okay, so I'm gonna see if I can grab, um, see if we have a silver bead. So instead of a silver bead, I found these silver bead caps from my um, March Bargain Bead Box, and I thought that would be great. So we'll put the bead cap on, and then I'll put the chevron bead on, and then another bead cap. Oh, goodness. Gotta cut my nails, they're too long. <laughs> All right, put that on. Then another bead cap. And then I'm gonna do a knot. So the knot you do here totally up to you. I am not going to do a whole thing of barrel knots just because I don't have the patience, <laughs> but I'll just do a quick, um, oh, actually, do I like that? See, this bead is very uneven because that's just how they're cut. And I don't know that I love how wibbly wobbly it is. Hmm. Maybe... Let's think about this, we need a bead. So these came in that same bag, or that same box. Let's see, putting one on either side looks. Oh, 
I just want to get a little bit of silver in there. Oh, Goldie's coughing. I'm going to cut that off because our glue is dry enough and I want it to be flush against our knot, the bead, I mean, by it. Okay. So we'll move our bead, spacer beads down too. And I'm just going to create a knot. We'll walk it down to our beads and make sure it's flush. There we go. That's cool. All right, so next we'll do our bone bead. Okay, and we'll do the same thing. we'll do our spacer then chevron then spacer And then we'll do our faceted glass bead. And I'm trying to decide, I know we have some silver right there, but do I want to do, I think I want to do a bead cap, but we'll see how it looks. loving this bright green against the dark green. So fun. And it's not screaming leprechauns and uh, shamrocks, so I can use it throughout the rest of the year. And it, yes, I might use um, a shamrock, but that could just mean for luck too. So I love things that are versatile. You don't just, you can't just bust them out for one month out of the year. Okay, so I'm going to measure this, see how long this is, because this is our first um, pattern, first part of the pattern. We're at, even with the clasp, we're just at two inches. So we would have four, six, mm, we, we should be okay. We should be okay. All right, so then next we put on our boho bead. Moving on down the line, put our knot here. Like I said, if you want barrel knot, you could do that. And if you know any other kind of knots, you can do those. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward through me knotting the rest, but here is our pattern. It's fun and funky and interesting. I love the texture going on here. So um, stay tuned.
Okay, so I have the entire bracelet knotted and I'm ready to do my clasp, but I decided to put the shamrock on the end before I put my clasp on. So it'll get knotted on with the clasp next to the clasp. I'm hoping, well, you know what? We'll just put a little knot here just in case we'll keep that. It's not gonna add too much length to the bracelet. Just use the heavy gauge jump ring. And it might go over the knot, but I'm okay with that as long as it has a place to rest. So isn't that cute? I'm sorry, I really love this, it's so adorable. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and put the knot in there. A Little bit of the dye from the leather has come off on my fingernails, but that's okay. And then we'll grab our barrel knot tube. It's always a little bit more difficult for me, at least going from this way, going back up the bracelet, but we can do it. I know we can. And sometimes I can't use the barrel nut, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm gonna do it so the barrel, I'm sorry, so our tail is on the bottom. I'm gonna go up three times. Oops. Sometimes I can't use the barrel. Okay, so let's try it without the barrel, uh, not tube. So I want to make sure that my piece goes through all three of these loops. There we go. And we'll just slowly tighten up. I want to make sure we don't do it too quickly because then the loops will get mixed up. And again, I am not the best person when it comes to barrel knots. I just don't do them quickly or don't do them enough. Kelly's Bee Boutique does a fantastic job with tutorials on them. Oh, good night. Should have been pulling as I was doing it. All right, we're going to redo this. This part might get edited out. <laughs> I just want to make sure I tighten it as much as possible because I don't want to add a whole bunch of extra length. So I'm trying to make this portion shorter as we go. There we go. I don't know how that came together. It's not the prettiest barrel knot, but guess what? It's my bracelet. <laughs> and nobody's going to grab my wrist and say, oh, that's the worst barrel knot I've ever seen. But yes, it's not the worst barrel knot I've ever seen. It's not the best though. So anyway, um, yeah, if you want a tutorial on barrel knots better than this one, check out Kelly's Bead Boutique. So there's our bracelet. I'm going to go ahead and glue that knot and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and glued the knot and I trimmed it. Now I could take a green paint marker or something the same color and try and cover up that little brown piece. It doesn't bother me. I'm not going to see it. So I'm just going to leave it natural. But isn't this bracelet adorable? So stinking cute i love it and honestly you can wear this all year round just have a green um, outfit or something green coordinating to go with it this could just be luck it's not leprechauns and craziness you know it's just it's really nice so there's our first piece um i'm gonna clean up a little bit and we'll move okay. on to number while two. cleaning that up which i obviously didn't get very far <laughs> i thought let's make um a matching pair of earrings i cut the remainder um of the overage on that bracelet in half. So this is the half portion. I am going to um, cut down the ends so they're at an angle so they'll be easier to go through um, a bead. So I'm gonna be using both sides. Okay, and then I am gonna use this I guess it's a quatrefoil, I'm not 100% sure. And uh, go ahead and put that through our charm. 
we will pull it through to make a knot. Okay. And then I'm going to grab um, one of these bone beads, stick it through, stick both through our bone bead, move that down. There we go. I mean, that's cute right there. And then uh, I'm going to grab one of these um, bead caps. And this might be a little trickier. Just got to smoosh them through. Yes, that's the um, technical term. And it's so hard with these nails. I need to cut them. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. I don't know. I, I, people who can keep long nails like all the time, more power to you. Mine just grow ridiculously fast. Okay, we're gonna try and scooch those through at the same time. Smoosh, scooch, whatever you wanna call it. Grab them and then kind of pull, oh, one came through. There we go. Push this down to the R bead. Super cute. And then I'm gonna grab one of these um, chevron beads, do the same thing. Hmm, this whole one, one is, is kind of oval shaped and not round. Let's try this one. This one's a lot better. Scooch him down. So there's our earring. Now I'm sure you're like, uh, how do I finish that off? Um, I think we're gonna use one of these uh, ribbon ends here. Now I'm gonna have to figure out how to, and I dropped it. I'm gonna have to figure out how to um, get it on there. So here's this is what it looks like. These can be kind of temperamental, so just take your time. So I think what I'm going to do is cut my leather before I close the um, the crimp, uh, the cord end, ribbon end, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to hold those down and just trim off my leather, leaving a little bit of a tail. And then I'm going to hold this crimp in place and make sure that the charm is facing forward. Third hand would be real great at this point. So I'm going to hold those and find my pliers and we'll just carefully bolt, fold this down and you can fold down. You don't have to fold down one side fully oh, at a time. Oh, like I said, this is going to be a little difficult. So we could, hmm, I was going to say we could lay it down on our mat, but I don't think that'll be a good idea. So I'm just going to try and fold down one edge. Okay, so we slowly got that one into place. Just gonna smush it. Oh, I pulled it up a little bit. That's okay. That's okay. And then of course you could do this with wire, wire wrapping, but I thought I would tie in a little bit of the lime green, and I do mean a very little bit, from the bracelet into this, these earrings. Make them a little interesting. And then we just gotta get this to cooperate to fold down the other one. There we go. Oh goodness. There we go. And you just smush. Okay, so there we go. And then I'll create the other one, the second one, after um, I'm finished with the blitz. So there's our pair of earrings. Fun, funky, love it. That'll be the one facing out, but this is what the back looks like. I mean, it's almost exactly the same. You just see a little bit of a fold there. You can make this the front too, if you liked how this wire looks there better. 
Okay, now I'm for sure gonna clean this up and then we'll move on. Okay, next I really wanna make a necklace. Um, and I don't know what style necklace yet, but I have this focal, it's um, Agate Heart, dyed Agate Heart. Uh, I think, I know I got that from Bargain Beadbox or Beadbox Bargain, probably the Christmas stuff. Um, I also, ooh, I have this guy. I got this from Hobby Lobby a long time ago and on clearance. It's like either tree agate or moss agate. Here is a um, pendant that I made out of polymer clay, sealed it with resin. Um, you know, I really wanted to make this into a necklace. It's a pin that I got from Joann's, but it, I, reali I just realized it doesn't have um, a bail on the back. And I don't know that I'm as creative as I want to be at the moment to create this into a necklace. I mean, I could use two jump rings down here, but I might want to just glue on a bale at a later date, um, whether it's this way, this way. I don't know. Isn't that so sparkly though? It's so pretty. I think I'm going to set that aside. I want, I want to do something really special with that. Um, oh, I got this at, um, in a Tucson, um, bead show in 2019 and I wire wrapped it oh and I wire wrapped it when I got it home but then never did anything with it I think that's really pretty that's a contender okay so I'll just start pulling beads that I want to use and then we'll kind of see what matches um, I have a lot of green beads and then I really only pulled out um, some of them for this video. <laughs> um, I have these Malachite big boys. These are from Joann's. I like those and I really like the gold and black with it. Um, I mean, this is not, you know, I don't know. I don't know that I'm, it's, it's green. <laughs> and it's a St. Patty's Day themed green, um, necklace all right so here's some six millimeter grade a malachite that could go with it i'm thinking that the only thing that these would go with is this guy because they're in the, close to the same family i don't know that I, it's really what i want to do yet i have some matte malachite mm, i have some polymer clay beads that i made those would go with this guy Um, let's see what else we have these resin beads or antique not antique vintage uh, acrylic oh, those don't match some crackle agate beads oh those look nice those look great I like these okay I am really liking this combo with these two so i'm going to move the other three off screen and then we're going to ac uh, accent this that's so pretty i wish i had like a little gold four leaf clover or um some kind of something that would, i could glue to the front of this to make it more saint patrick's day but i mean it is going to be tone on tone green so we'll get the point <laughs> so i really like this i need to find um, possibly some bead caps, definitely some spacer beads. Um, let's see, I'm looking at my little charcuterie tray for some cute accent beads. Ooh, this is kind of cool. These are, these are gold. I like those, you know, we're going to possibly include some of those. And let's see, oh, I didn't get any get out any crystals or anything, so maybe I'll look through my green crystals. And because I want this to kind of be a very, I want it to be like a really long necklace, and I think this is only 15 inches. So, I mean, while it's a long strand of beads, it's not going to be long enough for a really a really long necklace. Um, actually, a knotted necklace would be really nice for this too don't think we want to do a knotted necklace for a blitz though Ooh, we have a nice leaf from Heidi that's pretty that's really pretty I know I've grabbed two of those yeah there we go 
those match perfectly. Um, I'm gonna check my check glass drawer to see if I have any green flowers. I'm gonna check my um, crystals and get some spacers and some bead caps and I'll be back. Okay, so I grabbed some crystals. I don't know if they're the right colors yet. Um, here's some lighter green. I grabbed um, darker green. I'll show you more if I use them. I got some of these um, green hearts. And um, we can see if it can, yeah, we can make that happen. And then I found this in my chain drawer. It's a vintage necklace from one of my grandmothers. I'm pretty sure my grandma Mary, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm gonna use this, I think, in the back of the necklace to draw in the gold and to make it a little longer. So instead of using a clasp, what I'm gonna do is cut off the tag that's on the soldered ring here, cut off the clasp that's on the soldered ring here, and we will just make this, you know, we'll wire it onto our necklace. So isn't that really cool? So cool, and then I get to, you know, incorporate a piece of my grandma into my wardrobe. Um, I also grabbed these Jesse James spacers. I'm liking the swirls. Um, and I also have my uh, spacer, gold spacer box and my gold um, bead caps next to me. I just got some of these beads from Pam. I'm trying to see if those match. They're a little bright, but we might be able to work with it. We'll just keep four out for now. Um, I, I think these also came from Pam. I like those and then you know I don't, I'm not sure I know I have these leaves <gasps> these are cute they're very light color though I don't know if I can make it work I mean I know I can make it work I don't know if that's the look I'm looking for um, and then we have a darker version oh I like the darker version yeah we're gonna use the darker version in this necklace and I have it in two sizes I think I'm gonna go with the smaller size which is this one Ooh, I'm excited now. And I have I have four of them, but I think I only need two. And then we'll do one with a leaf and one without a leaf. So I have to think about how I'm gonna do this because this has a middle hole. It doesn't have a hole going through the bead like a normal bead. Um, so I'm gonna have to wire wrap it on, meaning that I'm going to have to figure out like how I'm gonna string two. So I could do it a couple different ways. I could use um, like nylon thread, like Esalon, or I could just wire wrap this with some thinner gauge wire and then um, strand, uh, connect it with bead stringing wire, I think. Let me find some wire that might be thin enough to go through there. Okay, I found some 26 gauge wire. I got this on clearance at Hobby Lobby a million years ago. And I'm gonna pull off two longer pieces of wire. This one's, I don't know, about maybe like 15 inches. You know, you guys know I use way too much wire when I do these things, but it's because I don't wanna mess it up and then have to redo it. Okay, so I'm gonna get two pieces of wire. They don't have to be the same length. They just have to be long. I'm gonna try, uh, try and line them up like this. Line them up. Sorry, my hands are so dry, oh my gosh. Um, and then I am going to push them through the middle of the flower. Let's get them to come out the back. Okay, and we just kinda want the same amount of wire um, in the front as we have in the back. Okay, you guys can't tell because I'm so zoomed in, but I'm going to bend one wire um, up one of the veins, and then I'll bend the other across, okay? We're gonna do the same thing for the front, but we have to figure out which one's the right wire to do that with. Um, I'm just gonna move one of them a little bit. Okay, so this wire goes to the left side, and this wire goes to the right. So we want them to be exactly opposite of each other just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure, yeah, these are lined up well enough. And then I'm just gonna take them together and I'm gonna twist my shamrock so we can twist our wire. And we're just gonna keep doing that until it twists up the wire. 
So we're making a thicker wire to make this a loop that we can, or a piece, a thick piece of wire that we can wire wrap into a loop. And I'm just gonna keep going. It's obviously gonna get a little tighter at the, the closer to the flower or the shamrock or whatever you wanna call it, but it's okay. It's okay as long as we get it twisted for quite a bit. I'm gonna, this is going to be a really cute link once we're finished. Okay, so we have twisted wire. Um, it gets looser and looser as we go up. Uh, it's about two and a half, three inches. I'm going to take my round nose pliers. I'm going to make a small loop. Okay. Oh, goodness. Okay, we're going to go like that. So we have half of a loop now. I'm going to reposition my pliers and I'm going to drag the tail towards the back and make the loop just a little smaller and then I'm going to grab the loop and turn it sideways so it's flush with our petals. I'm going to hold it like this and then I am going to try and avoid <laughs> the wires coming down um, but wire wrap around several times securing that loop. We'll go around one more time and then we're going to cut it off in the back but there's our loop okay so i'm going to take my plier or my snips somebody asked me if i got new snips yes i did these are beetle on and i'll leave the link below okay i'm just going to tuck that wire in we're gonna tuck this wire down, okay. There we go. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Pull these together. I'm gonna grab my um, nylon jaw and kind of straighten those out a little bit. I think this is, yep, this is beetle on too. And then we're just gonna twist these together just like we did on the other side. And we'll just keep twisting. Okay, so we kept twisting. Now we have enough to do our wire loop again. I'm going to show you one more time. And then I'll do the other one off camera, the second one. Um, we might make a pair of earrings out like this later. Maybe out of the brighter green. So here we go. Back. Forward. Make sure you don't poke your eye out. <laughs> um, reposition. Drag to the back. And then we are going to make this a little bit smaller, grab with our flat side, turn, and then wrap. Okay, and we're gonna go around at least one more time. Yeah, I think three is enough. Okay. And then we're gonna snip off in the back, tuck it in, and we will have a beautiful charm. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh my goodness, so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna do the second one and then I'll be back. Okay, so we have our two shamrocks. So cute, oh my gosh. Yeah, we're. I want a whole bracelet like this. Unfortunately, I only bought four of these. So I can't do a whole bracelet, but they're so cute. Um, okay, so there are our links. Now we just kind of have to decide how we're going to um, put this necklace together, I guess. We've got a bunch of greens. It's just going to be green on green and gold. And it's giving me all sorts of happy green grass vibes while also being shamrocky and St. Patty's Day, St. Patrick's Day. So let me get this wire out of here. We have our agate, crackle agate beads. I do want this to be a long necklace, so I'll probably use this entire strand. Um, we have our pendant. I can move the pendant off to the side. Um, we have our crystals. Yeah, I like those green crystals better than these lighter green crystals. They just match really well. Fortunately, I don't know where they came from. Um, 
think what I'll do up at the top is when we introduce our flower, um, I'll put the leaf at the back of the, or above the flower to start that piece of the necklace. And then, um, or you know what, this doesn't have to be a symmetrical necklace. I, I tend to do a lot of symmetrical necklaces, but, and I don't know why, because I'm a huge fan of asymmetrical. I do, I used to sell only asymmetrical necklaces when I sold on Etsy. So you know what, even though we did two links and we have two leaves and I got out even numbers, we're gonna do an asymmetrical long necklace today and that'll help me incorporate these flat these hearts which I wish I could I probably could figure out how to wire wrap these into a shamrock shake but I just said shamrock shake <laughs> shamrock shape we know what's on my mind um I think I don't know what color which there's a couple there's like three different greens in here so I think we're gonna go I don't know we'll, we'll put those aside for a second all right, so we have our things. I'm gonna get out some more spacers and some bead caps and we'll get to getting. Okay, so it's been about a week since I've touched this <laughs> board. I've done a lot of videos in between there and one was making a um, St. Patty's Day themed bracelet using um, lighter green shamrocks. So if you haven't watched that video, it was the one that was the monthly collab. So um, yeah. I really loved that process of making these um, into links. So um, let's just get started. I want, I still want to do knotting, but like I said, I just don't have the time to do a knotted necklace. I could do another one later. So um, I'm gonna use some Beadalon bead stringing wire. Um, and this is gold 19 strand. Uh, this is the one I got from Amazon. I'll leave a link to my Amazon storefront down in the um, description and it is tangled so I'm going to just cut some off here. Okay, And then um, I just kind of got to figure out how we want to go here so I'm going to cut open, cut open the beads and then we'll figure it out. So let's see. And I, like I said, I wanted to use this chain. It comes to, actually this chain's pretty long, but I want this necklace to be long. Like I want it to be below my chest. So I'm thinking I want to make the beaded part almost just as long almost as this necklace, which is, I don't know how long. We'll figure that out in a little bit. Oh, here's my ruler. So this necklace is about 19 inches long. I think I'll, we'll make a um, maybe 16 beaded inches. No, we'll do another. We'll do another. We'll make a 36 inch necklace, maybe 38. So it'll be, I'll need another 19 inches or so. Okay, so let's see. I have these bead caps from Pam and her Bead Temptation on Facebook. So we'll use some of those. And then I'll find some spacer beads. A few different versions here that we can use. Just little ones. Since we have such crazy beads going on, we'll just grab some daisy spacers and then some basic other spacers. And I'm just gonna go with how the mood strikes me. I'm not gonna do a pattern per se that I know of yet because um, we're gonna we're we're just gonna free free form this one. I know I want to use those somehow on one side of the necklace. I'm gonna cut 
cut open these check glass beads and I found um, my last night I found my crystal bag oh my gosh I've been look my green crystals I've been looking for those since I moved into this house and I found some green crystals so we're gonna use some of these spike cones probably too we'll see we'll see how it goes no rules right Actually, I'm going to use a spacer and grab a crystal. Not a spacer, excuse me, a bead cap. Well, the speed cups are just right for these beads, so we're good there. It's over here too. Okay. And then I have these from Jesse James Beads. I want to use, I think I want to use these swirl ones. I also have extras that I can use too. Um, this Friday there will be a new video for featuring Jesse James Beads out um, and I think it's gonna premiere on their Facebook channel so that's exciting featuring Tierra cast beads and bindings is this bright enough let's see this is my constant worry is this bright enough <laughs> all right and we're just gonna I'm not gonna I am gonna do a little pattern here but I'm not gonna do the same pattern throughout the necklace Shabby. And then I'm going to put on spacer. There's our necklace so far. It's pretty. It's very green. I love it. Okay. Nope, I need some gold between there. necklace is just letting me do whatever makes me happy I'm not making a pattern I mean it, it I am making a pattern within the necklace kind of by using gold and green together but I'm not making like I'm not making a complete repeating pattern it doesn't you can't look at say this is looking exactly like back here so um, I want to be very aware of the length 
So we're at six inches. I need about another three inches or so on this side of the necklace. I'm gonna put another heart in. And then I think I'll put another one of these. Actually. Ugh, I love it. Okay, so then we're leading up to our pendant. We're gonna have another few, a couple inches or so, and then we're gonna run into our pendant. So, what beads do I want up against this right here? Probably the agate, just so it rests really nicely between the beads. Um, let's see. So I need about another inch, or no, another inch and three quarters. And these are about a half inch. So I need about an inch and a quarter. I think we're gonna put on um, Rondell. And it's nice that we're using beads that are just about the same size as all the others. They're within the eight to 10 millimeter range. So it's not creating huge chunks here and there. That is a good look on some things, but not what I'm really going for here. All right. Hmm. about eight and a half inches. So I want to do 19 inches. So I'd need another, um, another inch, actually about another inch now that I'm thinking about it. Okay. So we'll do some of these or one of these. I'll do it by cone. We'll do another bead cap. Okay, that's the perfect length. So now I'm just going to slide on our pendant. Uh, which side do I like better? I don't think it matters. Oh, okay, we'll go this side. Now this side is the side that I'm going to use with the clover. So I have to kind of think about how long this is with the clover. So that's one inch, just making sure both of them are around one inch, one at two inches. So I'll need to find another seven and a half inches, but um, I'm going to use jump rings to connect those onto the necklace. So those jump rings are gonna take up some room. I want to use my two leaves have this one right here um, and I'm going to use I think I'm going to use the leaves in two different ways so um, one I'm going to make into a link to go above the flower and then I think one I'm going to make into a charm to hang below one of the flowers so um, I'll use I'll need a head pin and an eye pin
and then I kind of have to figure out how I want it to hang from the um, from the leaf. Do I want it to? Or I'm sorry, the flower. Do I want it to hang like this with the wider part of the leaf hanging down, or do I want it to hang like this? I do not want it to hang like that. So um, we'll go ahead and put our um, head pin in and make it into a charm by making. I'm just going to make a simple loop. Oops, I need to snip that first. Okay, so there's our charm. And then we need to make our link by um, either using a piece of wire, um, an eye pen. I'm just gonna use an eye pen. I have some eye pins that I really hate and I had I used them you guys saw that in that bracelet video and I'm not using those right now because I don't want them to break on me so I just grabbed a different set of eye pins So there's our connector or link, whatever you want to call it. So we have those off to the side for when that part of the necklace comes up. I'm going to, the only asymmetrical part on this necklace will be, well, that I think of is going to be right here where I add two more and then a, a bead cap. And then we're just going to go up the left side of the necklace the way I decide to go up it. <laughs> All right, so we decided this was two inches right here, plus probably like a quarter inch, so another half inch there, connecting those on, another half inch onto the chain, and I'm, I'm just eyeballing this. And then this guy is an inch, so that's three and a half inches three and a quarter, three quarters inches. Um, so I really don't need that much on this part of the necklace. So I'm going to, I mean, I could make it symmetrical like it, it was over here, but I, I'm really trying not to. So I think I'm gonna put a heart on it. Yep. And then we'll go with I'll try one of these guys. I haven't used one of these yet. Um, he might be a little too chunky. So let me try one other thing. I'll try one of, oh my gosh, I haven't used any of these. All right, well that's a little disappointing, but I don't want to introduce it now because it's just gonna to be too chunky on this side. I'm trying to avoid it to be too chunky. So I found these, they're a check glass, they're sitting in a dish next to me here. Do this. Okay. Oh, I like the two golds next to each other, okay. You can always, if you don't have a lot of spacer beads, but you have an abundance of um, uh, jump rings, I'm just gonna show you, I'm not gonna do it right now, but use one as a spacer. So I just put on one of those agate beads and we put on another agate right after the jump ring. If I can find the hole to this bead. And then look, you have a spacer. Don't think you have to buy a bunch of crazy items. You can use what you have. And I believe me, I do that all the time. Even though I do have, you know, a lot of beads, I don't have everything. <laughs> so, okay, we will kind of check this out. We're at three inches. I said this was about, well, it was about four inches. So I need about two more inches on this side. Um, I'm gonna put a bead cap. I am going to put another heart. Yeah. 
and I am going to put another spacer and another fire polish and one more of these guys So let's see where we are now. Okay, we're at about four and a half. Is my math really off? So four and a half, so that would take us to seven and a half, uh, about eight, and, okay, so we need a couple more inches here. I'll just do one of these. Let me just make sure. I'm going to measure the whole necklace. So we're at 14 and a half inches. So that would take us to about 18 and a quarter. So I just need a couple little beads here. Do that and I'll put another bicone on. Or maybe not. I don't know if my bicone cones went. Maybe I ran out of bicones. So we'll just use this guy. Now I need to find um, a crimp bead that'll match and um, with beetle on, it says that I need a, either a number two crimp bead or a number one crimp, or I'm sorry, number two crimp tube or number one crimp bead. Um, and then let's see, I'll put a gold um, crimp cover right there so it'll look like it's a gold bead. I'm going to grab a crimp bead and a crimp cover and I'll be right back. Okay, that was a nightmare. I was just trying to find my crimping pliers and everything on my desk right now is green. So it took me like five or six minutes just to find them. <laughs> it was a little bit of a nightmare. Okay, so I have the end of my wire. I have some beetle on um, bead crimp beads. These little guys open. Okay. And then we'll find the end of our wire, put a crimp bead through. Then we'll grab one of our links, pull this down. And then I'm just gonna try and come down through a couple beads. You don't have to do this. It's perfectly fine if you don't. Just, um, if I mess something up, it's easier to crack a crimp bead than restring my whole necklace. To me, anyway. If it's not easier to you, that is totally fine. Okay, so these are so little, I might be able to just flat crimp them. You can do whatever you want. I had some crimp covers too. All right, I will add the crimp cover later because in my frantic search for my crimping pliers, <laughs> Everything got misplaced. So we're gonna have a big cleanup in here pretty soon because it's just getting ridiculous. Okay, so we'll make sure that our wires aren't crossed and then we'll put the beat crimp bead in the little valley there and then we'll smush. And then we will turn it 90, to 90 degrees and then we will smush again. And then we'll just kind of walk them up the jaws. And then um, there is your crimp. Now I am gonna worry about all of that later. I'm going to continue with this bracelet and I am going to, um, or I'm sorry, necklace and Next, I'm going to put, use our jump ring 
to connect the next link. Is right here. I just want to make sure that the front of each flower is facing the correct way. Close the jump ring. Next jump ring we're going to open and we are going to put on our leaf connector. Oh my gosh, I love that. And then next jump ring, we are going to connect our chain. Okay, here's our chain. And unfortunately, this video went much longer than I thought it would. So we're only making three things today, but I did make that matching bracelet. You can check out that video if you haven't seen it already. Um, I do have beads that I want to use to make um, either earrings or just like a less fussy matching necklace. <laughs> you know me, I have to have options. <laughs> and then we're going to put the jump ring on, uh, jump ring on the chain. We're going to put the jump ring on our connector. And so half of our necklace is complete. Okay. Now we're going to go from the other side of the necklace and we're just going to do the same thing. Untangled for a second here. Move our beads down. I want to slip this um, tail inside of these beads. And then I can cut the tail later. So now we have this side and I have a couple options. I can just put it onto a jump ring. I can um, crimp it onto a jump ring, but this is soldered closed. So I'm gonna just crimp it onto the chain. I mean, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, <laughs> I say that, but if I want to change the chain, it would be really easy later on to just take off these jump rings and change the chain out. So yes, it'll be a little bit more secure that way, but if we do it onto a jump ring, I can later on change it out. So let me find a, another one of my jump rings. Oh, here we go. And I'm going to attach it to the chain first. So we don't have to open it after we crimp. Okay. And then we'll just take our other end of our bra our necklace here. I keep saying bracelet in bracelet mode, I guess. And what do we want? We want the necklace to be loosey-goosey. So we don't want it to be so loosey-goosey that there are he obvious gaps, but we want we don't want it straight, right? Because we don't want it to um, lay weird, lay crookedly. I, I just, I don't know what how I want to say that. So oh, before we do that, we need to grab a crimp bead. goodness okay and then we grab our jump ring oh we want to make sure that that's absolutely closed he's a little wonky here we go and then put our wire through come back through a few of these beads and this gives me a little bit of tension to pull on my cord. Okay, so 
I'm just making sure what we want to measure twice, cut once. Definitely applies to making jewelry. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and crimp this. I'm going to find, um, oh, actually, let's cut off these wires first, and then I'll find a crimp cover. Make sure you only cut the one that's got a tail. You guys have seen me make the mistake and not do that. Okay, uh, I'll find my crimp covers, and we'll be right back. Okay, um, just so you know, I'm going to have a huge mess to clean up after this. <laughs> All of these green beads to put back, and uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. All right, so we'll just slip our bead cover, crimp bead, right on there, and then you just kind of finesse it until it looks like um, just a round bead. Okay, that looks good to me. Oh, yeah, that looks good to me. And then we'll do one on the other side. I don't know if you heard that, but Colty just made a noise and it was super cute. All right, so here we go. And here, let me back this out just a little bit. Here is our necklace. Um, hello, first of all, <laughs> This is awesome and it doesn't have to be just, that's like my thing, like I love theme jewelry. I have nothing against theme jewelry, but I love thinking out of the side of the box. So yes, it's bright shamrock green, but it also will go with a green dress, jeans and white tee, whatever. So, um, oh, 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 we almost forgot, we almost forgot. And by we, I mean me, we, I almost forgot to put on our little charm over here, our little leaf that hangs off. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot a cute little part. So I think I want it to go right there. Or do I want it to hang here? Or do I want it to hang here? Oh goodness, I don't know. All right. Uh, right there's cute. Right there is nice too. Oh, sorry. Right here is nice too. I think I'm gonna put it right there. Um, open up my, put it right on the jump ring. There we go. Oh, I love it. Okay, so here's, here's that portion. Let's flip it that way so you can see it. So we've got a cute little um, dangle hanging there. We've got our little shamrocks to the side and then oh gosh it's so pretty it's so pretty I gotta remember what this beautiful um, stone is I will never remember it actually for sure unless somebody tells me what it is <laughs> and then I get to wear um, some vintage chain from one of my grandmothers too it's just it's all in all in one just a really cool necklace and yes it kind of looks symmetrical until you look closer and it's not so that's when you don't have enough of, let's say you only have two of these beads or three of these beads and you wanna work it into your project, it's okay, make it um, asymmetrical. So let me know what you guys think, um, not only of this piece, of course, we had the bracelet, which doesn't really match because I wasn't going for matching, I was just going for, um, St. Patty's Day. And then these earrings, I didn't put the ear wires on yet. But they're super cute. They match. And check out the video for this bracelet when you guys have a minute. 
So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys like these um, Blitz videos. Let me know you, what you'd like to see in the next one. And um, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay tuned for Goldie. She's super cute. Bye-bye. Yes, you're so cute. Are you waving? Say hi. Are you waving? Are you a good girl? Yeah. Hi, Goldie. Are you happy mommy's done with work for the day? Yeah. It's a good girl. Yeah, say hi. 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 Look at those little teeth. They always come out. <laughs> Hi, Goldie. We love you.